Hello everybody, good morning. Andrea Trevsky here with Dental Health Tutoring. So this Sunday we will be talking about oral pathology. So we will have our oral pathology um, case studies session. So very exciting because with oral pathology it's nice because we get to go through some images and you will all have to tell me what the image is and then you'll have to tell me what it's caused by and then how to treat it. So I just finished doing our lesson for Sunday. So let me go through a few questions and see if you're able to answer some of them. So let me share my screen here. Okay, can everybody see it okay? So it should say oral pathology case studies um, session. So there's about 33 slides all together. Now in our lesson on Sunday, I will not only be talking about what's on the slide because depending on how all of you answer the questions, I may talk about another pathology or another condition if I feel that you find a certain slide a little bit harder for you because oral pathology is huge. Um, if you do have an oral pathology textbook, you should look through all of it and I mean that. I know it seems um, daunting, overwhelming, but it will help you to practice looking at all of the images, all of the pictures, and then try to decide because there are so many things that look similar. But you have to know, you will have to know um, the differences. You will have to know well, what age range they typically are for. You will have to know again how to treat it and then how to prevent it in the first place. So oral pathology, I find it a very exciting unit, but I can say that because I've been tutoring now for about 13 years. But when I was a student, I still found it exciting, but I did find it hard to kind of memorize most of the images. So in the lesson on Sunday, I will be going through the main ones that you have to know. Because for the board exam, you don't have to know all of them, but they tend to ask the same ones on the tests. I can't promise anything, but they seem to be very, I don't know, they don't seem to change the questions that they're asking for oral pathology. So let me go through a couple here. So not all of them, because I will save that for Sunday, but let me go through a couple and then see how to do. Okay, guys, so the first question is, Samantha is a new patient. You are doing her full intraoral and extraoral exam today. You see a few things to make note of. What do you see here? Now, as a new student, as a new hygienist, as a new assistant, you might be looking at this and being like, oh my goodness, I see this, I see this, I see this. Like, what are you asking me to look at here? So if you have this type of question on the exam, think what's the main thing to look at. So try not to look at your localized pathology, but look at the main thing that's in the picture because sometimes you can look at a picture or you can look at the mouth and say, I see five different things here. So what one thing do they want me to point out for the best answer? So to help you pick the overall condition. So in this case, do you see thin enamel? Do you see dental erosion? Do you see crowns or do you see uh, veneers? So again, two answers here are correct, but you have to pick the one that's the most correct. So stop the video if you're not sure, because I will be talking about the answer now, okay? But think about it. Think about how I said, look at the overall condition, but then you also have to make note that, think of what the case study is asking you to, okay? So let's move on here. So the answer is dental erosion. Now, some of you might have picked thin enamel and you might be saying to yourself, well, erosion is thin, thin enamel. So why would thin enamel not be the right answer? Well, the erosion is the best answer because if you look, clearly more than only thin enamel is happening. So if you picked thin enamel as your answer, think to yourself, well, thin enamel, could look different in many, many ways, yet dental erosion only looks one way. And this is the way it looks. You know, it's that yellowing, you can see the teeth kind of cupped out a little bit, like over here, um, that's specific to um, dental erosion because you can have thin enamel without having dental erosion. But can you have dental erosion without having thin enamel? No because thin enamel pretty much it is dental erosion. So does everybody understand that? So think about the answer, think about the case study, and then look at the overall image. Okay, so let, let's, let's go through one more and see how you do with that. 
Um, Samantha has excellent oral hygiene, but you wonder why her erosion is um, generalized so everywhere. What could be the cause? Could it be um, eating disorder, acids, daily sugar consumption, or daily aspirin intake? And this is another perfect example of two answers here are correct, but you have to think of the most correct. So stop the video if you're not sure, because I'm going to be talking about the answer now. So acids is the most correct. A lot of you probably picked eating um, disorder as the most correct. In this case, it's not, because if you move back to the image, typically, but not always, but the most correct way to determine an eating disorder is the front anteriors are the only ones affected. Here, it looks like all of them are. So you have to be even more specific and say acids. Now, in an eating disorder, that is caused by acids also. But that's the main cause of the whole thing. If in the image you had seen only two of the front teeth affected, or perhaps all three of them, or all six of them, I should say, then the correct answer would be eating disorder because that is more specific. But acids is still the most correct in, in this case because the case study is saying that you wonder why her erosion is everywhere. Typically, for an eating disorder, it's not everywhere. It's more localized. So if the case study had said localized, then you could be specific in saying eating disorder. But since it didn't, then you have to stick to acids. Okay, so you see how you kind of have to think about a case study a little bit more so? You have to really think outside the box. You have to think what they are thinking. But, but these two are perfect examples of easy questions, making them very, very confusing. Because a, a, a lot of you, I'm almost sure, probably said eating disorder, right? But now that you know that the answer is acids, now you're probably thinking, okay, now that makes sense. So this is what we do every hour, or I'm sorry, every Sunday for about an hour is we go through case studies. So if you need help with them, let me know because this is what I can help you guys with. Practice makes perfect. So if you are a Dental L member, you have full access to all of this, to our sessions for 2016, for all of them for 2017. So you will have every access to everything, or sorry, all access to everything. So let me know if you would like to be a member, because as I said, you guys, practice makes perfect, okay? So with the day-to-day -day Thursday, have a good Thursday, and I will see you guys next time.